what 2020 would bring. We thought of a fresh new year with new goals and opportunities, but our lives changed forever. The COVID-19 pandemic created chaos in our world. We were quarantined to our homes, businesses shut down. We all felt isolated. We lost loved ones. Racial justice issues surged. It's a lot of change that none of us expected. Now it's time for us to restart. How do we restart? How do we learn from the past year? And how will our lives be different? Join us for the sermon series, Restart, Life After the Pandemic beginning June 5th for three weeks. David Wright. And I'm Karen Wright. We welcome you to Trinity's live streaming worship service.
Good evening. Thank you, Karen and David, for that warm welcome on this beautiful spring evening. And it is my joy to also welcome you. I'm Pastor Fritz. I'm one of the pastors here on staff at Trinity. Welcome to our Saturday evening worship service here at Trinity Lutheran Church. We're located in Lansdale, Pennsylvania, and hope that if you're ever in the neighborhood, you're welcome to stop by. Mostly because this is our first worship service, gathering with people here in our sanctuary for the first time in 15 months. It is good to see everyone gathered here today. Uh, we are glad and thankful for you being here, for trying this out, for your patience as we work out the quirks. I've been here for now for almost six months, but it's my first Saturday evening live worship service. So if I make a mistake or something, I ask for your forgiveness in advance. And so uh, uh, thank you for being here as we, uh, as we begin re anew, as we restart our corporate worship life in person. If you're coming to us on YouTube or on Facebook or on our website, we're glad that you're here. We encourage you to head to our website, trinitylandsdale.com, trinitylandsdale.com, to scroll to the bottom left-hand corner. You'll see a button that says Bulletin. If you click on that, it will open up a copy of tonight's Bulletin, and you can follow along uh, with our worship service. We'll be celebrating Holy Communion in just a moment, and so we invite you to have bread and wine or grape juice there with you so you can celebrate with us as we receive communion together tonight. If you're visiting with us or you're new to the Trinity community, on the front page of your bulletin is a QR code. We invite you to take out your smartphones right now, uh, hover it over that QR code on the front page. It will take you to our connection card page. We would love to know that you are here. If you have a prayer request, if you have an address update, if you want to grab coffee, if you want to join our church, or you uh, are looking for a faith community, that's the way to indicate that and to do that tonight. Uh, during our worship service tonight, there'll be an opportunity for you to bring forward your offering because of the pandemic. We do have a couple of few COVID, uh, 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 COVID um, uh, uh, particularities for our worship service. And so when you come forward tonight for Holy Communion, there's an offering basket right here on the, uh, 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 on the cushion. You're invited to drop your offering there tonight. We invite you in, uh, to fully receive communion tonight. We'll talk about how that's being offered when we come to that portion of our worship liturgy tonight. You will notice that you are hearing, if you are live in our sanctuary tonight, you are hearing everything. So this is a hybrid worship service. And so we are live right now on social media. So you will be able to hear everything. But it is a mixture between live and pre-recorded events. And so you won't see it, but you will hear it. And you are invited to follow along with your bulletin on that. This weekend, we invite you to join us for Fellowship Hour tomorrow morning from 8.45 to 9.30 under the green tent in our backyard here or on 9.30 or at 11 a.m. after the 9.30 worship service for coffee and tea. Uh, we, you're more than welcome to. I think I've covered everything. I'm going to look back to make sure we're good. Okay, we've covered all the partic partic particularities for this service. I invite you as you are able to stand as we begin together with a litany of praise on this first worship service in 15 months in the sanctuary. Let's give thanks to God for allowing us to come back together again. Today, O God of the everlasting arms, we rejoice at this regathering of our congregation. We praise you for Saturday worship in word and sacrament, for the personal presence of our pastors and worship leaders, for infants, children, youth, adults, and the aged together, for song and live music, for service with one another for the wider community, for the mutual consolation of the faithful enacted on Sunday, and weekdays. O oh God, we rejoice at this regathering for our baptismal life together. Empower our church, faithful God. And we pray, O oh God of safe harbor, for the emergence of a wholesome world, with health restored, mourners consoled, vaccines available, hospitals restocked, employment reinstated, poverty averted, sustenance shared, science respected, travel resumed, fear replaced with confidence, 
and sorrow turn to joy. O oh God, we pray for the emergence of a wholesome world. Renew the whole world, merciful God. Renew the whole world, merciful God. Give us your peace, eternal God. Give us your peace, eternal God. We continue with our gathering hymn. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. together. 
all-powerful God, God, in Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ you turn death, death into life and defeat into, into victory. victory. Increase our faith and trust in him, that we may triumph over all evil in the strength of the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. Just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with scripture, I believed and so I spoke. We also believe and so we speak because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure, because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. I invite you to listen to a telling of the gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. And he went into a house, and the crowd came together again so that they could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to seize him, because they were saying, He has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, he has Beelzebul, and by the ruler of the demons, he casts out demons. And he called them to him, and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, the kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, the house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, People will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is guilty of eternal sin. Because they said, he has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside, asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking around at those who sat around him, he said, 
Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. I invite the assembly to be seated, and I invite those who would like to come up for our children's sermon, either at home or here in our sanctuary, you can do that. Welcome tonight to our first worship service together. It's really good to see you. I'm Pastor Fritz, and I'm glad that you could come tonight, and uh, I'm glad that you're here tonight for church. I hope you've had a really nice day, and maybe you've gotten to play outside. for a little bit of time, but either way, we're really glad that you're here tonight for church. I brought with me tonight one of the thank you cards that we use here at Trinity. It says on the front here, uh, thank you. And then in the lower corner here it is our logo, Trinity Evangelical Lutheran Church. And when you open it up here, it's blank. And I sometimes use these to write thank you notes to people who have helped out or volunteered or to just write a note and let somebody know that I'm thinking of them. Have you ever received a note in the mail from somebody? Some of you have. Maybe you've gotten birthday cards before, or maybe grandma and grandpa have sent you a Christmas card before, or maybe uh, when you're in school, you've gotten a Valentine's Day card, right? We send cards to other people to let them know that we're thinking about them sometimes. Sometimes they say thank you on them, or they might say, thinking of you, or I love you, or you did a great job, or whatever it is. Maybe it says congratulations, or or maybe when it's your birthday, your card says happy birthday on it. Cards are ways that we let people know that we're thinking of them, that we appreciate them. It's a way that we show our gratitude, which means like our thankfulness, which means that this brought me joy. I'm thankful for maybe your time, or for the gift that you've given me, or for your help, whatever that might be. We send a card as a thank you. In our, uh, our, our reading from Corinthians that Tracy read for us just a moment ago, we got to hear her tell about how Paul, when writing to the people in the church of Corinth, uh, about um, uh, not to give up hope, keep going, find, be thankfulness. Like, so grace upon grace, as Paul writes, will keep growing on in us. This week, I hope that you find a time to maybe you can have a grandparent or a parent or maybe your teacher or an older sibling help you write a thank you card this week. Letting somebody know that you appreciate them, that you are grateful, that that they're in your life, and that uh, even though sometimes things are really tough, that we're grateful for those who are around us and for the love that they show us. Okay? So this week, if you need a thank you card, you ask a parent or or another adult or a teacher, and I'm sure that they'll help you find a thank you card, and you tell them that you want to write a thank you note this week, and then have them help you get a stamp, and you can mail it off to them, letting somebody know that you appreciate them and that you're helping bring joy to other people. I invite you to fold your hands And you're going to repeat after me. Dear Jesus, thank you for your love. Help us love others and show how thankful we are for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming this week. I hope you have a great week. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Grace, mercy, and peace from God, our Father, Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, be with you all. Amen? Amen. How good it is to see you tonight, to be gathered here. I know some of you are still at home listening, and we look forward to welcoming you back. Uh, We can't wait to welcome you back here at Trinity. But for those that are here tonight, welcome. We're glad that you're here and that you came by for our first worship service. 
Uh, if, you, if you, like, did not know that we are back in person, that's okay. We're going to have another in-person, indoor worship service tomorrow morning, Sunday at 9.30, and moving forward for the rest of summer. Saturday night at 5.30, Sunday morning at 9.30. If it rains for an outdoor 8 a.m. service, we're going to move that indoors too. And so 5.30, 8, and 9.30. Either way, it's good to see you here today. Our lives changed on March 19th, 2020. That was the week that Governor Wolf stood on front of a number of press cameras uh, in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and told us that the state would be shutting down all non-essential businesses uh, on Sunday, March 21st, 2020. It was the next day or two when stay-at-home orders were declared for across the Commonwealth. Pennsylvanians were to stay home and refrain from going anywhere unless it was life-sustaining. Our lives changed very quickly after that. Our, our routines and our patterns were disrupted. We didn't know what to do. There was confusion and sadness and, and in many cases some anger and frustration and real fear. Liturgically, it was the season of Lent. We had just gathered to celebrate the third week of Lent. A concert was planned here at Trinity for that next weekend that had to be canceled. At that time, I stood before my congregation in Philadelphia and I said to them, I don't know what's going to happen, but we will communicate via email our Holy Week and our Easter services. We're going to shut down for a few weeks in accordance with the governor's instructions, but we'll see you soon for Holy Week and Easter. That was the last in-person worship service that I had with that congregation. Since then, I've come here and joined Trinity's team as the lead pastor. Our lives were forever changed that week, particularly on March 19th. Today, we are starting a new sermon series, a sermon series that we're calling here at Trinity, Restart Life After the Pandemic. Over the next three weeks, we're going to be asking three questions. Tonight is the first question that we're asking, what are we thankful for? What unexpected blessings have appeared in our lives over the last 15 months since Governor Wolf made that announcement? Next week, when we gather for our church picnic, Outdoors, we're going to ask the questions, what lessons did we learn? Or is there anything that we're taking from the last 15 months into the future with us? And on the weekend of the 19th and the 20th, we'll ask the question, where do we go from here as a church community, as the people of God, as our families and lives, as we figure all of this out? And so I welcome you that as we start again in-person worship to this sermon series, we're calling Restart life after the pandemic. One of my learnings over the pandemic comes from Walter Brueggemann. Walter Brueggemann is the professor of, uh, uh, emeritus professor at Columbia Seminary. He's a prolific Old Testament author and scholar. I first met Walter Brueggemann in writing in seminary when any course you take in the Old Testament or Lutheran seminary, you're probably going to have a book assigned by Walter Brueggemann. He's written over a hundred books. He's a well-known Old Testament scholar. I had the opportunity to meet Walter Brueggemann in um, the summer of 2018 when I was in Washington, D.C. for the Festival of Homiletics. Uh, the, the, the theme for that was preaching as moral imagination. I had an opportunity to attend one of his lectures. During the pandemic, I uh, had a chance to become familiar with one of his books. It's called uh, uh, Spirituality in the Psalms. It's a, night, it's a small, I think it's relatively small, a uh, book all about the spirituality that is found in the Psalms. You can find it at most religious bookstores or online. He introduced this idea that I, um, I wasn't familiar with. It. I, I, I read it in the book after I had first heard it, about how the Psalms are categorized in three major categories. The first is orientation, the second disorientation, and the third reorientation. Think of it as a cycle or as a pattern. Walter Brueggemann discovered that in the Psalms there are periods where uh, uh, life is oriented, things are good, and then periods where, or seasons that things are disorientation, and then seasons where things are reoriented. 
he realized that it's not just true in the Psalms, it's actually true of the history of all of God's people, beginning from the book of Genesis in the very beginning all the way to the present day. In orientation, life is good. Things are calm. If it was the weather, it'd be like a day like today. The skies are blue, not like the weather mid-afternoon yesterday when we had a flash flood here in our county. The seas are calm. Things are good. We feel close to God. We know those seasons, but you know what? It can't get much better than this right now, right? We're in a season of orientation where, 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 where things are just fitting together. If we were putting together a jigsaw puzzle, there'd be no missing pieces in our puzzle, and they would almost find themselves interlocked together. Things are good. Unfortunately, though, orientation doesn't last very long before disorientation. Something happens that disrupts the regular pattern, our lives. Maybe it's a doctor giving us a diagnosis that we weren't expecting. Or it's a spouse or a significant other telling us that they no longer want to be in relationship. It's a phone call that changes life forever or the boss saying, hey, we need to chat. Something happens where life is disoriented. That no, the skies are no longer blue, the waters are no longer calm, and that there are waves coming over the hull of our boat. That's disorientation. The good news is, is that God doesn't leave us in disorientation. In the same way that orientation doesn't last forever, disorientation doesn't last forever because it's not until too long that God brings us from out of disorientation into reorientation. Reorientation is where what was abnormal now becomes more normal, right? We all experienced this in the pandemic. In March of last year, we went from being told we don't need to wear face masks it won't protect us to then needing to wear face masks and in what felt like in a matter of hours as each news report was updated. In reorientation, we figure out how we're going to adapt and move forward. What is our new reality? Famous example in scripture, I think, of this. A, gospel, a guy by the name of Job. We're told in Job that Job was a man who feared God. He was blameless. He was upright. This is all within the first few verses of Job. Job was a holy man. Job was living in a season of orientation when his book starts. Things are good. He has a wonderful family. Job has wonderful fortunes. He has, uh, 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 you know, his harvest is coming in. His farmland is rich. Everything is going right for Job. And then Job enters into a season of severe disorientation. All of his children die. His wife dies. All of his property is destroyed. He's filled with sores and, and sick. He regrets the day that he was born. He wants to just die himself because the pain and the suffering is so bad. Job is in a season of horrible disorientation. In the last few chapters of Job, and Job's a long book, it's 40 some odd chapters, God comes to Job in a whirlwind and takes him on a tour of the cosmos and shows him the waters and the sea and the stars and begins to reorient Job. Then instead of looking internally, beginning to look externally to the work that God is doing. The book of Job ends with his fortunes restored. God blesses him with another family, with an additional siblings, and brings Job out of a place of disorientation to reorientation. How about us? January 2020 came and it was a brand new year. It was a fresh year with unlimited possibilities. How many folks here set New Year's resolutions in January of 2020? No one has resolutions, or at least not that you can remember. But often we set resolutions at a new year. We have hopes and dreams of places that we want to travel to, friends and family that we want to visit. And that all changed very quickly in that first qu quarter of 2020. We entered into a corporate gap season of disorientation with the COVID-19 pandemic and our lives changed upside down. What was normal all of a sudden wasn't allowed. We were told to stay physically distant from one another. 
we weren't able to travel, plans were canceled. Some of us lost the loved ones, people we were close to. Some of us weren't able to be present with our loved ones. Some of us were diagnosed with COVID-19. And yet, out of that disorientation, God has not left us there. God has moved us to a reorientation. We experience this every year, don't we? We experience this season with the liturgical calendar. Every year we gather on Palm Sunday in a place of orientation as we shout Hosanna, Hosanna, as we wave palm at branches, as we march and we sing. And then very quickly, Holy Week, as Holy Week continues, we find ourselves in a severe disorientation. But on Good Friday, as we remember the night that Jesus was crucified and hung on the cross. It felt like all hope was lost. The darkest night of our souls. And that nothing, nothing can happen now that bring any good news. We hear every year how the disciples abandon Jesus. Peter, after promising I will never abandon you, denies Jesus three times. And yet we know that even in those, the, those darkest hours of disorientation, God brings a reorientation. That God reaches into that tomb and raises Jesus from the dead. And that where there is despair, there is now new life. There is resurrected life. Where there was despair, there is now hope. And we know that Easter, no matter how dark Good Friday is, no matter how thick the shadows are, Easter always arrives. Isn't that true for us too? A raise of hands, and I know that some of you I can't see here, but do you feel more hope-filled now than you did on June 5th in 2020? Right? Yeah, right? I mean, we feel more hope-filled now than we did a year ago on this day. We feel more hope-filled now than we did six months ago. We feel more hope-filled than we did maybe a day ago. Because now we're gathered here together to celebrate and to worship once again in our beautiful sanctuary at Trinity. Now that vaccinations are more easily available, infections are lower, it is safer to gather together. We feel more hopeful, more joy-filled. We sense that we are moving from a place of disorientation to reorientation. Earlier this week, I had an opportunity to gather with the choir members who sing in our adult choirs at, here at Trinity. Andrea, our director for Worship Renewal, who's our musician tonight, led our choir together in a series of prayers. And a portion of that prayer, which I absolutely loved, I was a few minutes late to the gathering, and so I came in right at the beginning of the prayer. She asked choir members to name out loud what they are thankful for, what they are grateful for, where they have seen God at work in their lives over the last 15 months. I don't remember exactly everything that they said, but I tried to remember. Later that evening, I got home and I wrote down the things that I could. I heard prayers of thanks for frontline and healthcare workers, for family, for Zoom, for music, prayers of thanks for friends and curbside pickup, prayers for Amazon delivery and for Prime, prayers of thanks for the creators of face masks, a gratefulness for vaccines and for the ability to once again gather in person. It was a holy moment to hear that in the midst of so much sadness, in the midst of so much anger and fr frustration and confusion, in a season of disorientation where our choir members had to figure out how to record in their bathrooms, how they needed to rehearse together over Zoom when they couldn't gather together in person, that they were still finding stuff to be thankful for, to praise God for, to be grateful for. It was clear to me that God had been with the members of our choir over the last 15 months, 
in just the same way that God has been present with all of us. Let's be clear, though, tonight. God did not cause the pandemic. God does not cause bad things to happen to God's creation. Remember that in the book of Genesis, when God creates something, it is what? It is declared good and holy. God doesn't make mistakes. God did not cause a pandemic to happen in the world. And while miracles do happen, while there are times where God um, uh, 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 cures and does miraculous things, the promise is not that because you're a Christian those things will happen, but rather that God promises to be with you in spite of them. In the waters of baptism and in the bread and in the wine, God promises, I will never leave you nor abandon you. And that God will be with us through them. I love the words of Isaiah 41.10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. We heard last week Vicar Amy uh, preach on Holy Trinity Sunday. And and Vicar Amy, who's now off onto her seminary internship, she starts this week. Read once again for us that for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have not just regular life, but eternal life. In Matthew 28, 20, as Matthew's writing his book, he was inspired by the Holy Spirit that teaching them, and this is Matthew quoting Jesus, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. The good news for us is that no matter how dark, no matter how horrible the disorientation is in our lives, it will not last forever. God does not leave us in disorientation. It might last a while, but God will always move us from disorientation to reorientation. Tonight, as you think about the last 15 months of your life, As you reflect back on what this has been like since that week of March 2020, can you begin to see where God is at work or has been at work in you over the last 15 months? What are you grateful for? Where has God shown up? Maybe it's been really unexpected. In January 2021, the Pew Research Center uh, released a, uh, a report that revealed more Americans, this was in the report, more Americans than any other people in other economically developed countries say the outbreak has bolstered their religious faith. And that nearly three in 10 Americans report a stronger personal faith because of the pandemic. And the same think that the religious faith of Americans overall has been strengthened. Perhaps for some of you, you know that your faith has grown. Maybe you consider yourself part of the three out of that ten who say, my faith has grown. I feel closer to God. My faith life is not the same. And perhaps for some of you tonight, you are still in a season of disorientation. We aren't through the pandemic yet. Let's make no mistake about it. Less than 50% of Pennsylvanians, according to the COVID Act Now website, less than 50% of Pennsylvanians are fully vaccinated. And only 58% of Pennsylvanians have received one vaccine so far. So we still have a long ways to go. There are still people dying. When we consider our neighbors in places like Brazil and Peru and India and Japan, We see thousands of people still dying. The pandemic is far from over. And so there's still a lot of people in our world that are still grieving the loss of a loved one, of a parent, of a child to COVID. There are still so many who are are still unemployed, who still find themselves wondering, how am I going to pay the bills this month? I'm still in a season of disorientation. I want you to know that God promises to be with you in that disorientation. And that, like Job, it can feel like it's never going to end, but that God is with you, and that God does not abandon us in our disorientation. However, for those of us, and I think that we're right on the verge from disorientation to reorientation. If, if, you know, if I had a, had a flip chart here, I'd put us right in that middle line, in that cycle here, that we're starting to make that turn but we're not quite there yet. 
for those of us who are there, what are you grateful for? How can you inspire others that, yeah, it was really, really tough, and that disorientation was horrible, but I can see God at work now looking back. On Saturday morning, today, I posted a question on my Facebook wall. I asked people, what are the unexpected blessings of the COVID-19 pandemic? Where have you, uh, what are you thankful for from the last year? I want to share with you, I pulled up my Facebook page. You've probably never seen a pastor on Facebook in the middle of his sermon, but yet here we are tonight. The world is a different place and we are reoriented, right? And here's what some folks had to say. Time to spend with family. Somebody else says, I'm thankful that the stop on collecting student loan repayments means I could actually put a little money in savings which covered my rent when I was out of a job for a month. Another person wrote, building stronger relationships with co-workers at the hospital. Another person, being around the house during the day meant I could actually form relationships with some of my neighbors. Another person wrote, three months with my family and another baby blessing. Somebody else wrote, I became a pastor. Another person wrote, a new addition to the family and learning how to Zoom. Grateful to have my world, my partner, my doggies, my friends, my job. Nothing more needed, they wrote. We are very lucky and intensely grateful for that, knowing that so many have not been as lucky. Tonight, what are you thankful for, dear church? As you look back on these 15 months, where do you see the Holy Spirit was at work in you each and all of these times? Now that we're beginning here at the beginning of June, we're only five days in into June 2021, what are you grateful for? now that we enter into the season of reorientation. If you were to survey the history of the people in the Bible, when they have experienced their seasons of, 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 of orientation, disorientation, and reorientation, we notice a very common theme very quickly. When they came from a season of disorientation to reorientation, they always gave thanks and praise. We see this in Noah's ark, when the, when, when the ark finally comes to its new resting place and Noah opens up the door, what do we hear in Genesis? Noah builds an altar to give thanks. When the Israelites travel across the Red Sea and they escape out of, uh, out of being in captivity and bondage, on the other side of the Red Sea, we're told that they sing praises and give thanks. In Matthew, when Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were told in the resurrection account, when they come to the tomb and it was still dark before dawn to prepare Jesus' body, they discover that the stone has been rolled away, the guards have collapsed or fainted, there's an angel who talks to them. Did you stop and notice what happens when they leave? We're told in Matthew that they leave with great fear and great joy. In reorientation, it's okay to be a little afraid. Things are still kind of new. It's still okay to be a little anxious, like the two Marys were. But we're also filled with great joy. Despite the unimaginable disorientation that the, that the Mary Magdalene and the other Mary in Matthew's Gospel experience, they still found room to be joyful. After they had seen their Savior, their friend, Jesus crucified, dead and buried, they still find great joy. God does not leave us in the tomb of disorientation, but moves us to the resurrection to Easter. The resurrection was not a one-time event. We heard that in 2 Corinthians that Tracy read for us from Paul. Paul is urging the Corinthians and urging us that despite the contemporary afflictions to believe in Jesus, don't give up hope. Believe in Jesus who will bring us, Paul says, into his presence. How beautiful is that Paul says, yes, 
Everything is for your sake so that grace as it extends to more and more people, grace as it extends to more and more people may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart for we are being renewed day by day. God continues, even on June 5th, 2021, to bring resurrection from death, hope from despair, and new life out of pain and strife. God does not leave us in a state of disorientation, but brings us to reorientation. For St. Paul in 2 Corinthians, the hardships and sufferings are real, but so is the hope that God is at work redeeming and transforming life. Friends, what are you thankful for? Tonight, what are you thankful for? I'm going to encourage you, maybe it's not tonight, but there is notepads in all of the pews or at home to pick out a pen and a paper and to write your own psalm of reorientation. It's very easy. Dear God, I'm thankful for. That's all. That is then your own personal psalm of reorientation. You'll be following a long tradition. That's how we began our worship tonight. We called it a, pray, a litany of praise, giving thanks to God. You have brought us through this. It wasn't easy. It not, might not still be easy now, but we are here today. And we are a testimony of your love, of your redeeming work in the world. And we live. We give thanks that we have the opportunity to share that love, to share that testimony with those whom we encounter. That God has not abandoned us, but God was with us, bringing us from disorientation to reorientation. If you're willing, I would love to read your, your, your psalm. However you write it, however long or short it is, you can email me, ffowler at trinitylandsdale.com. You can drop it by the church office. You can put it in the offering basket. It will find its way to me. But I would love to know how God has been at work in you over these last 15 months, bringing you from a place of disorientation to reorientation. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you. Thank you that you have not abandoned us, that you promised to be with us to the end of the ages that you have brought us through this pandemic, that we are here called by your name with your presence and your Holy Spirit falling upon us and that we are able to declare to the world that you are a God of life, that you are a God of hope and that with you we can overcome any season of disorientation. Bless us now that in our worship and our hymns and our praises as we gather at your table that you continue to do a new thing in us, helping us to reorient to these days that we are now living in for such a time as this. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able as we sing together our hymn of the day.
Let us come before God in prayer, responding to each petition with these words. Hear our prayer. O God, on this Sunday, Saturday night, we ask you to sustain believers around the world. Give wisdom to pastors, musicians, and church committees as they make plans for their summer worship. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. On this weekend of National Animal Rights Day, we ask you to safeguard animals, both wild and tame. Give them the habitat they need and rescue all animals from abuse. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On this weekend anniversary of D-Day, we ask you to bring an end to warfare throughout the world. Halt the violence between nations, on our streets, inside our homes. Heal the wounds of prejudice and embolden all who strive for peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. During this month of many weddings, we ask you to bless all marriages, nourish the fidelity of partners for one another, and be yourself a companion to those who live alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On this weekend of National Cancer Survivors Weekend, we ask you to strengthen both those who are recovering from disease and those who face now death, bringing healing to humanity as it struggles against the coronavirus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Always we ask you to comfort all those who suffer and to heal the sick, provide care for all persons afflicted with mental illness, and sustain their families. Visit those who, in pain, hidden from us, and those we name here before you, especially Al, John, Sally, Jimmy, Fran, those listed in the bulletin, and those we name here before you silently or aloud. For Robert, Susan. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Once again, we ask that you empower each of us, that we never lose heart, and that you receive our silent prayers. Lord, in your mercy, we remember with gratitude those who have lived and died in faith, especially those we name here before you. Lois Peterman, Elizabeth Gelder, Walter Hatch, and we ask you to welcome us with them into your eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, mighty God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Just a moment, we're going to continue with our musical offering. But before that, I want to say thank you for your gifts that support and sustain the ministries here of Trinity Lutheran Church. If you're here in our sanctuary tonight, again, we invite you to bring up your offering, if you have it, and to drop it in the basket here uh, when you come forward for Holy Communion. If you're online, we invite you to give securely through our website, trinitylandsdale.com, or by mailing a check to us at 1000 West Main Street, Lansdale, Pennsylvania. Let us continue together as we hear Amy and Sherry uh, play together Blessed Assurance.
Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body, for the life of the world. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you. Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join the unending hymn. God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, you we praise and glorify, you we worship and adore. You formed the earth from chaos, you encircled the globe with air, you created fire for warmth and light, you nourished the lands with water, you molded us in your image, and with mercy higher than the mountains, with grace deeper than the seas. You blessed the Israelites and cherished them as your own. That also we, estranged and dying, might be adopted to live in your spirit. You called us to live through the life and death of Jesus. And the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. He poured it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the blood of my covenant, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Together, as the body of Christ, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your Son, the firstborn of your new creation. We remember his life lived for others and his death and resurrection, which renews the face of the earth. We await his coming, when with the world made perfect through your wisdom, all our sins and sorrows will be no more. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, holy and merciful one, holy and compassionate, sent upon us in this meal your Holy Spirit, who breathes, whose breath revives us for life, whose fire rouses us to love. Enfold in your arms all who share this holy food. Nurture us in the fruits of the Spirit, that we may be a living tree, sharing your bounty with all the world. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy and benevolent God, Receive our prayers and our petitions, as Jesus received the cry of the needy, and fill us with your blessing, until needy no longer and bound to you in love, we feast forever in the triumph of the Lamb, through whom all glory and honor is yours, O God, O living one, with your Holy Spirit, in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. 
Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours. Now and forever. For those of you at home, I invite you to take your elements and to hold them up before your computers and to hear that Christ has set these tables with more than enough for all. Come. Thanks be to God. Here at, uh, here at Trinity, we believe that this is not our table, this is not the Lutheran Church's table, but it is God's table. And all of God's children are welcome to receive Holy Communion. If you are at home, I invite you to take a piece of the bread, to break it off. If you are with someone, you are invited to commune one another with the words, the body of Christ given for you, and then to take the cup, your wine or your grape juice, using the words, the blood of Christ shed for you. If you are alone tonight, I invite you to say those words, knowing that you are surrounded by the saints of yesterday and the saints of tomorrow. For those here at our sanctuary, Pastor Diane and I are going to come forward here in front of the altar. We're going to begin with each of the transepts to my left and to my right. We will invite you with a hand gesture to come forward and receive either the wafer or the wine. In the table here in front of my right here, there are gluten-free wafers and there are um, grape juice. If you prefer grape juice and not wine, we invite you to receive from that table here. And again, the offering basket is right here if you have brought your offering. I invite the assembly to be seated as we continue with receiving Holy Communion.
This is the body of Christ given for you, and the blood of Christ shed for you. to receive God's blessing. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen, preserve you, and keep you to life everlasting. Claim your wholeness, live in forgiveness, dwell in God's peace now and forever. And let God's people say amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we receive from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. I invite the assembly to be seated for the announcements. Thank you again for joining us here at Trinity Lutheran Church for worship on this second weekend of Pentecost, after Pentecost. We're grateful that you are here. Again, if there is anything that we can do for you, if it's prayer, if you need a pastoral visit, uh, if you would need to connect with a staff member or one of our pastors, we invite you to call us or to email us. All of that information is available on our website, trinitylandsale.com. If, uh, if you are participating online, we invite you to scroll down to the bottom to find your weekly. That is right after where your bulletin is. If you are here in person, your, the weekly is the ivory-colored handout that was handed to you when you um, entered into our worship space this evening. Uh, we encourage you to take this home. This has all of the upcoming events and happenings here at Trinity. On the back, you'll find this week at Trinity, as well as lots of other information. We want to cover just a few brief announcements, though, together. Outdoor worship will happen tomorrow at 8 a.m. Outdoor worship in our circle driveway will be at 8 a.m. Again, unlike how it has been in the past, if it is raining or the weather is just not favorable for us to be outside, we will worship in the sanctuary as well at 8 a.m. So rain or shine, there will be worship at 8 a.m. Uh, um, except next Sunday. So now after all that, next Sunday, we invite you, June 13th, to come to our church picnic. As we celebrate that we are entering into a reorientation, we are going to gather for one worship service on Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. That will follow our picnic. That worship service will be outdoors unless the weather is, uh, uh, prevents us from doing that. We will still have Saturday worship next week. So for those of you who are tuning into this service, we will be here next Saturday at 5.30 p.m. And on Sunday, one service next week at 9.30. Had to think about that for a second. Okay. Earlier this week, several of you, and I appreciate that you did so, but several members of our Trinity family emailed me asking if I was asking for you to send money to me via Amazon gift cards and iTunes gift cards. Please be assured that I will never ask for money through email. If we are asking for something, it will come over either by the telephone or it will be an in-person visit. Uh, please be aware that there are folks out there that are not well-intentioned, that are looking to scam people, and that they use uh, our email, uh, our names. Please verify that if you get an email from somebody claiming to be from Trinity, that it is actually an email address that ends in at trinitylandsdale.com. If it is not, then most likely it is a fraudulent email please ignore it or call if you're unsure. Again, I will never ask you for your credit card information, ask you to send me money to help somebody in need through email. We'll do that over the telephone or in person if that situation does arise. 
Beginning this weekend, uh, beginning on Monday, you will no longer need to RSVP for worship. So thank you to those that did, but that is no longer necessary. We praise God that our infection rates in Montgomery County, our deaths, our hospitalizations are continue to decrease, that this will be the only weekend that you will need to RSVP for worship. Beginning, not next, beginning next weekend, you can just come on in. We'll be more than welcome, looking forward to welcoming you. Our Father's Day appeal deadline is June 7th. If you would like to honor a special father figure in your life, there's details on the website. Feast is back and is held every Monday from 5 to 6 p.m. outside of Social Hall. You are invited to either stay and enjoy a picnic on Monday evening or to take Feast to go uh, with you. VBS is scheduled for August 9th and 13th and the Emmanuel 9 Zoom Bible study will be held on June 17th at 7 p.m. Again, there are much more details in your weekly, so please, if you have a few moments, take that with you home tonight and to read through that. We uh, thank you so much for being a part of our Trinity community. We're grateful that you are here. I invite you to stand as you are able, as Pastor Diane sends us out with God's blessing. Now the blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. 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 Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.